Okay, this video is intended to go through the MATLAB tutorial with you. Um, it really is something that you can do on your own. You don't really need a uh, tutorial to go through it, but um, you don't need a video to go through it, but uh, um, just in order to help you uh, along, I decided to record a video as well. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through some of the tutorial and then the second half of we picked up on uh, there's another video that's available to you um, let me show it to you here it is called numerical methods MATLAB review 2 okay so this is going to be the first half of the video numerical methods MATLAB review 1 and then we'll have the second half there um, so you can pick up the rest there so what I want to do is kind of start with the MATLAB interface okay now what you see here in the tutorial is um, a little bit dated uh, this is what it used to be I'm going to show you now what it is now okay uh, that's what the MATLAB screen looks like and I'm going to point to you a few important details first off here's the command window as you might guess this is where you run commands okay this is where you're going to run your programs okay you're not going to actually write your programs here you're simply going to run them there okay uh, so you're not going to do a ton in the command window uh, besides run your programs the key thing that you're going to want to do to write your programs is you go up here to new script and you're going to click that okay and when you click that it opens up an editor and inside the editor is where you'll actually write your code okay and so that's um, we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment on the left side here um, is some of the different uh, programs that you've already written uh, and that is based upon the folder that it's looking for programs and it, it, whatever you're in it's going to have a certain default whenever you start MATLAB it's going to have a default location for where it's going to save programs and where it's going to be looking for programs and it's very important that you understand this because a lot of confusion comes out from where students will save the program in one folder but MATLAB is actually looking for the program in another folder and that generates an error uh, so you need to make sure you understand where MATLAB is looking for your code okay it's going to be looking for it here C drive users documents MATLAB whatever okay um, if you're running this on your own computer probably not a big deal um, if you're if you come to the labs and run it um, then you want to make sure that you're saving all your code onto your own network drive you don't want to save your code onto the physical computer in front of you because then you may not have access to that later uh, whereas with the network drive you can always pull that back okay um, also I'll, I'll go over a little bit here later on the um, Argo apps and how you can access MATLAB online okay we'll do that in a moment but it's very important that you understand where MATLAB's looking for your code and where you store your code, where you save it, okay? Now, uh, let's go back here to the, to the uh, tutorial here and kind of in, talks about the MATLAB window, also talks about the workspace, okay? Now, the workspace um, is over here on the right side, okay? And, and again, MATLAB, you can move these windows around, okay? So it may, yours might look a little bit different. But in the workspace on the right, that's where you'll actually um, have your different variables that you'll be using within your code. So for instance, if I did something like, if I typed in the command window, A equals three, Oops. then you'll see on the workspace on the right, it says, hey, there's a variable A, and right now it happens to be equal to three. Okay, and it'll have all your variables there on the right. Okay, that's what we call our workspace. Okay, those are the key things there. Uh, the command window, the workspace. The last thing is the command history. Um, now on here, I don't see a default, but you can certainly bring it up. What I could do, I think in my views, I think I can add a command history onto there. Um, whether you need it or not, it's not that big of a deal. The key thing to remember with command history is actually you can use the up arrow key and the up arrow key can actually cycle through some of your command history okay so that's really useful okay so you can use the up arrow key in fact any regular MATLAB user uh, frequently uses the up arrow key to go back to previously run commands okay very very useful so if I wanted to say a equals 3 again just do that um, if you want to run code again uh, you probably use the up arrow key find what you did hit enter and run it again okay so that's very important as well so command window workspace and command history are things three things you really need to know okay working in the command window uh, it's pretty much like a calculator 
uh, in the example there, 5 plus 11. You know, so you can type that in there. Okay, and it says answer equals 16. What MATLAB actually does is if you don't assign a variable, it by default assigns a variable. In fact, it assigned the number 16 to the variable ANS. In fact, if you look at the workspace, you'll see up here ANS and value 16. Okay, so if you don't assign a variable, it by default will give you the variable ANS. Okay, now in general, that's a bad habit to do though. You usually want to have every calculation that you do assigned to a variable. Okay, all right, you can also do it something like this. Here's another example A equals 8 times 9. Oops. And there you see D A equals 72. And now the value of A in the workspace has changed to 72. So again, you can do a very simple addition, multiplication. Of course, you can do those kind of things in the command window. Okay. So we've got that. Um, and now you can also, I, it says to type in capital A. If you type in capital A, it says, hey, I don't know what that is. Uh, because uh, MATLAB is case sensitive. And so it sees capital A and lowercase a as two different variables. Okay. And has no idea that there's any connection to the, between the two. Okay, so please remember that MATLAB is case sensitive. Okay, now um, here's a tip. Sometimes you don't want the answer to an operation displayed in the command window. In fact, many times you don't. Okay, notice the difference between the following. Here, I'll do it on here. I'll clear this as well. CLC clears this. So you can say A equals 8 times 9, which is what I just did. And notice it displayed in the command window. Now I'm going to use the up arrow key. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a semicolon at the end. Notice nothing's displayed, but I guarantee you the calculation is still done. Okay. In fact, I can do this. B equals 5 times 3. I can guarantee you that calculation is still done. In fact, I can show it by just doing that. So B is still equal to 15. It just didn't display it. When you add the semicolon at the end of the command, it will not put it on the screen okay and then a lot of times in your code you want to do that because typically in your code you have only one result that you care about but you you might have lots of calculations between the start and the end so you might have one number you care about at the end but you had to do 10 calculations to get there who cares we don't want to mess mess the screen up with all those calculations so we put a semicolon at the end of them and we only put the final answer as displayed and again, you can read all this in the tutorial. You can go through it yourself. The tutorial is designed for really for you to go by yourself. But if you want to watch a video and do it, that's great too. Okay, um, working with arrays. Okay, arrays are vec variables that contain multiple indexed quantities. Okay, when you first hear that sentence, you probably go, okay, what does that mean? All right, well, let me give you an example of how this could be handy. Let's say you want to add up the first 10 numbers. You could certainly do this. B equals 1 plus 2 plus 3. I could type 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10. Nothing wrong with that. B equals 55, the sum of the first 10 numbers. Okay? But now what if I said instead of that, I want you to give me the sum of the first 1,000 numbers. Well, all of a sudden, you're going to go, hmm, I'm not sure I really want to type in all 1,000 numbers. There must be a better way to do that. Yeah, there is. Okay, and it's called using an array. Okay, there's an easier way to do this. You can use an array and a MATLAB command. So, for instance, instead of typing out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I could just set up an array x as equal to 1, colon, 10. If I do that, x is no longer just one number. Okay, see, b is equal to 55. b is just one number, 55. But x is not just one number. x is actually a set of numbers. Okay, it's a set of numbers one through ten. Okay, we would call x an array. So it's no longer just one number, but a group of numbers, a set of numbers. Okay. And in fact, it's the integers one through ten. Now we can use the sum command in MATLAB to add up the terms of x. So if I just did this, sum x fifty-five. Now, a better way to do that would be to do it this way. Up arrow key, B equals sum X. Okay? And then it, it assigns the sum of X as B. An even better way to do that is to put semicolon after it, because 
why do I need to show that on the screen unless that happened to be the final answer? Okay, so we've kind of got that information. That's good.